Now the final group of biological molecules that you're going to learn about in this section are nucleic acids. Now nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides. A nucleotide has three parts to it. A phosphate group, a sugar, which will be a pentose, five carbon sugar, and a base, a nitrogenous base, which contains nitrogen. Now there are three molecules that are made up of these nucleotides that you're going to be coming across in the course. These include deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, ribonucleic acid, RNA, and adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Uh, we'll look at DNA first, as it's probably the one you've heard about most. So DNA structure may look very complicated, but actually it's quite simple if you break it down into its component parts. It has this special shape, this double helix as it's called, which is basically a ladder that's been twisted up. And each ladder is a strand of DNA. It's a polymer made up of many repeating units called nucleotides. The nucleotides come in four different versions, and when you join nucleotides together in a long chain uh, to make a strand, we call them polynucleotides, or this is an example of a nucleic acid. As I've already mentioned, nucleotides have three parts. So the nucleotides that make up DNA contain the phosphate group, like we said. They contain sugar, and in this case, the sugar is deoxyribose, which is where DNA, the, the D part of uh, DNA comes from deoxyribonucleic acid, and the base, as I said, there are four different uh, nucleotides that make up DNA, and those vary base, uh, because of these bases. The four bases that you can have are cytosine, thymine, uh, which are both examples of purine bases, and then there are two other ones, adenine and guanine, which are example of pyrimidine bases. Each nucleotide is linked to the next nucleotide by a condensation reaction. Just like condensation reactions that we've seen before, this is a reaction to make a bond, a covalent bond, which will remove water. The bond formed in this case is called a phosphodiester bond. So when you join lots of nucleotides together with lots of condensation reactions and make these phosphodiester bonds, we end up with a polynucleotide or a nucleic acid and that makes one strand of the DNA. But to make DNA, it's a double-stranded molecule, we need to another strand, we need an, an opposing strand, and the strand is actually arranged uh, in the opposite direction. It's what we call anti-parallel. So one goes in one direction, and the other strand goes in the opposite direction. The bases always pair up between these two strands in the same way. A purine base will always pair with a pyrimidine base. This means that A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. It's what we call complementary base pairing. In order to explain the direction of the strand, we use the terms 5' prime and 3'. Prime. The end with the spare phosphate sticking out is the 5' prime end. The two strands are joined together by hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. There are two hydrogen bonds between A and T, and there are three hydrogen bonds between C and G. So the second nucleic acid we're going to look at is called RNA, and it's actually very similar to DNA, apart from three major differences. RNA is a single-stranded molecule. It's not double-stranded like DNA. RNA has a different sugar in its nucleotides. In DNA, it was deoxyribose, but in RNA, it's ribose. RNA does not contain the base thymine. It contains uracil instead. So while in DNA you had adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, in RNA you have adenine, guanine, and cytosine, but then you have uracil instead of thymine. We're going to be coming back uh, in the course many times to look at RNA and its functions and how it's used by cells, but for now we're just going to look at the structure of it. The final nucleic acid we're going to learn about is ATP. Again, we're going to learn about ATP a lot more when you look at respiration uh, and the process of respiration and how energy is used in the cell. A ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate, and it is a uh, nucleotide um, which contains the base adenine. It's got uh, the sugar ribose, and then instead of having one phosphate group, there are actually three phosphate groups attached. Now this is important because if you break the covalent bond between the last two phosphates, it releases a little bit of energy. 
and it, this is why ATP are like the batteries for a cell. The cell will use ATP and break that bond to release the energy um, to, for all its metabolic processes.